Hello everybody, it's me Jones on J here. Air travel is by far the fastest way to get around the world. Millions of people fly every day, whether for leisure travel or business travel. And while travel is fun, traveling can be frustrating. Most passenger frustrations come from their experience at an airport, especially older airports that suffer from major congestion problems. These congestion problems can lead to major delays and cancellations, which can quickly turn traveling into a nightmare. Many airports around the world have been undergoing massive redesigns and redevelopments to try and solve their congestion problems, while also adding over-the-top amenities to add to the experience. But what exactly makes a good airport? Let's discuss. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on so you can stay up to date on the latest architectural projects and statistics. In order to first answer the question, let's take a look at some real world examples. The airport that has commonly been ranked as the best in the world is Singapore's Changi Airport. Opening in 1981, this massive airport serves as Singapore's hub and sees around 66 million annual passengers. The facility consists of four terminals, with a fifth one currently under construction, which are some of the nicest looking terminals on the inside, with a pleasant use of coloring and plenty of cleaning. The airport is also packed to the brim with amenities to keep you busy, going beyond just shops and restaurants. Have a delayed flight? Stop by the indoor butterfly garden to relax with the world's largest indoor waterfall, or take a dip in the airport's swimming pool. There is even a free movie theater in the airport as well. The airport has so many more amenities as well that you could almost wish for a delayed flight so you can check them all out. But while these amenities are all cool, they are not the only thing that matter when designing a good airport, as they don't exactly solve the congestion problems that are what cause major delays and congestions. You have to remember that the end goal of an airport is to get you from your car to your plane to your destination as quick as possible, and that is what the primary focus of every airport should be. But how exactly can an airport excel at this? It all comes down to the layout and design. As airports have grown, they have adopted many different design layouts to fit more gates as efficiently as possible. I'll do my best to explain the evolution of terminal designs as simply as possible with some simple diagrams that I've made. When passenger terminals at many airports were first constructed, they were originally built with a general layout like this. A simple rectangle shaped terminal with check-in on one side and gates on the other side with security in the middle. This approach worked as airports were first starting out, but as they added more and more gates, that would only increase the length of the terminal which would make walks to far away gates really long. To combat this problem, airport terminals would add something called concourses, which sort of act like branches of a terminal that would each hold gates. This design ended up becoming extremely popular, since it allowed airports to dramatically expand the number of gates they had while efficiently using less space. This approach worked for a long time, but it too had its fair share of problems. The main problem it has was that as airports added more and longer concourses, congestion could easily build up. Since there's only one way in and out between concourses, that limits the number of planes that can enter and leave at the same time to only one. You can definitely see how this becomes a problem, especially as the concourses get longer. This design is still used by many airports that are known for congestion, including Chicago O'Hare International Airport, Los Angeles International Airport, and others. The most common solution to these problems are satellite concourses, which are concourses separated from the terminal that are connected underground by walkways and or automated people movers. These allow for just as many gates, while also improving the flow of aircraft traffic throughout the airport by providing more routes between gates and taxiways. This approach is being used in the new Salt Lake City International Airport, which I've made a video on that if you are interested in it. A good example of an airport that implements this technique is the new LaGuardia Airport in New York City. I recently made a video on that project, so be sure to check it out. To sum up that video, the new airport uses a connected satellite concourse design, which allows the airport to use the space it has efficiently while also giving aircraft multiple routes to taxi in and out, which will dramatically ease the major congestion problems that the old airport had. 
While the airport may not have all the amenities that you see at Singapore, the new concourses do a great job of getting passengers to their gates and out of the airport much quicker than the old airport. In conclusion, airports can be very difficult to design and operate. Many designs over time have tried to improve airports by adding gates while trying to keep things as efficient as possible. The amazing amenities that you get at Singapore's Changi Airport definitely give passengers plenty to do. But in order to design a good airport, you have to try and design a layout that gets passengers quickly to their gate and allows for aircraft operations to run as efficiently as possible to avoid congestion. The satellite and connected satellite concourse designs have proven to be the most efficient in those two regards, and therefore, most new airports are choosing to go for those two designs. Be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. What matters to you when you visit an airport, and what do you think makes a good airport? Let me know all that good stuff down below. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.